tidal volume, as you probably remember from your GCSE studies, if you did GCSE P, of course you may not have, um, that is the volume of air which is breathed in and out of the lungs per breath. That's what tidal volume is. And we measure tidal volume in millilitres. Now I'm pretty confident that you could also imagine, or you may well know, that what we would call breathing frequency, and there's no surprise at what this is gonna be, is how many breaths you take per minute in beats per, uh, sorry, beats per minute, breaths per minute. That's actually a very common mistake that students make, I just made there. So this is in breaths per minute. Let me make sure that I put B equals breaths, not beats as a classic. Now, I've multiplied these things together, right? So I'm, I'm basically asking the question, well, well, if we take how many breaths per minute uh, we breathe, and if we take how much we breathe per minute, we of course can calculate how much we, uh, sorry, how, many, how much breath we take per breath, how many um, breaths we take, um, per minute, we can calculate the total amount of air we breathe in a minute, right? And this is what we refer to as your minute ventilation. So how much air do we ventilate in and out per minute? It kind of is quite clear what that should be, right? And we've got some units here, of course, which is in liters per minute, not surprisingly at all. So we have got this basic equation, okay? Now what I want to introduce to you to begin with is some resting values and then we're going to illustrate this graphically. So first of all, at rest, it varies very much from person to person, human beings will breathe something like 20, 12 to 20 times. And of course we're going to multiply that by a resting tidal volume. By the way, this is all at rest, I should say at this point. We're going to multiply that by how much breath we take in per breath and also how much we breathe out. Now, at rest, what do you think that's going to be? Well, I'm going to tell you it's in the region of 500 millilitres or half a litre of air um, per breath. And that means that our resting minute ventilation is going to be something between 6 to 10 litres per minute. Now, now that's six to 10. If I was to take 12 breaths at 500 and multiply it would be six liters per minute. If I was to take 20 at 500, it'd be 10 liters per minute, right? So the point I wanna make now is I wanna to start to consider how we'd sort of illustrate that graphically. And we use something in order to do this called a spirometer trace. Now I'm not gonna get into the real fundamentals of spirometry. I would encourage you to research in a little bit of detail, but it's effectively, someone uses a mouthpiece and they, um, as they're, as they're breathing, they breathe in and out of the mouthpiece and a graph is produced as a result of the quantities that they are breathing. So let me draw it like this. There's our axes. On the x-axis, I want you to be aware that this is time, okay? And on the y-axis, I want you to be aware of the, that this is volume of air. All right, so, and that volume of air, of course, is gonna be in liters. So. Can we represent this notion of six to 10 liters per minute, 12, 20 breaths of 500 meters? Well, the answer is yes, we can. Because if I start sort of sketching out the curve here, this is what that would look like. Now I'm not gonna do all 12 to 20, but each one of these peaks and troughs represents one breath. Now I'm trying to be as consistent as I can. I've not done it quite consistently. So here's one breath, here's two, here's three, here's four, etc., etc. So we've got, uh, those examples. Now the other thing that we could say, if we take the midpoint here of those arcs, this, if I was to go here, this quantity here would be how much? It would be 500. This, if I was to do the same thing here, I'm trying to get the mid, this quantity here would be 500 and so on. Effectively what we've got here is if we carried on with the curve, we'd have let's say 12 breaths of 500 milliliters and that of course is going to make 12, uh, six liters over the course of a minute. Now I'm gonna undo that little bit of sketching there because of course what happens is during exercise things change. So let's imagine that here exercise has somehow miraculously begun. Well all of a sudden we wouldn't have that curve there, we'd have it like this. And down here we'd have it like this. So all of a sudden now my tidal volume is greater. Can you see? that we've now increased our tidal volume. Now I have not increased the number of breaths per minute I'm doing, that would involve, obviously the, the uh, wave would become more frequent in that case, it would effectively crunch across. But what we've got now is we've got an increase in our tidal volume. So what I want you to be thinking about is if we were talking about, let's call it sub-maximal exercise, going on a training run, uh, let's call it um, doing something like a jog. 
what would we expect these values to be? Well, if we go back to our tidal volume now, we are basically saying, well, it's greater than 500 milliliters. We're multiplying that by some number, what color did I have for the frequency? I forgot now, I had orange. So let's go here. We're gonna say now that the person might have greater than 20 beats per minute at sub-maximum exercise, depending on how intense it was, right? And what that's gonna mean for our minute ventilation is that that minute ventilation is now gonna equal up to 20 liters, okay? So before we were doing sort of six to 10 liters, we're now doing 20 liters per minute, perhaps, okay? Now, obviously that would be if I was doing uh, one liter, 20 beats per minute, or I was doing, um, uh, 40 beats per minute of 500 say you'd have to get, put those relative calculations in but the point i want to stress even further is if we go further and do maximal exercise maximal exercise of course these peaks and troughs are going to exaggerate further in other words tidal volume is going to go up and frequency will go up by the way and by the way frequency going up would look more like this closer together curves right so it would look more like that. excuse my dodgy drawing so if we were looking at maximal exercise, you know, something like a 400 meter sprint or an 800 meter race or uh, a full court press in basketball, what would we expect the values to be here? Well, first of all, with our tidal volume, it can be up to three liters, okay? So we can get up to three liters of air into our system, or we could say here, obviously, 3,000 milliliters. In terms of breaths per minute, our body is capable of doing 70 to 120 breaths per minute. Now, that seems a lot, doesn't it? Two breaths per second. Now, we'll look at how a breathing rate frequency increases in our respiratory control lessons. You may have done that. You may not have done that previously. So what does that mean for our overall minute ventilation? What are we capable of? Well, we're capable of getting up to up to 180 liters per minute of air into the lungs. Now notice we are not talking here about how much oxygen is consumed and utilized. We are talking about how much air we can get into the system. Now we still need to be efficient at extracting that oxygen out of the air. Of course, our rate of diffusion and our concentration gradients and all that make a difference there. But here we're talking about the pure physical quantity of air that a human being is able to get into their lungs during let's say maximal exercise can i just also stress to you that if you were asked a question about recovery you would of course be moving in that direction right active recovery probably refers to equivalent values as submaximal but in active recovery of course we're bringing down breathing rate gradually we're bringing down tidal volume gradually we're uh, we're still distributing uh, greater levels of oxygen around the body to, for example, oxidize lactic acid. So bear that one in mind that you could be asked about that. But there are some interesting values and concepts related to lung volumes. Thank you.